In this week's screencast, we'll be introducing the popular front-end framework Ember.js for working with our client API that we built a couple of screencasts ago using Django REST framework. Um, I'm going to be mostly focusing on how to set up uh, an Ember application and some of the conventions and some of the ways people stumble early on when trying to work with an Ember.js application, as well as a little bit about handlebars and how to get some stuff there, and a little bit of things that we need to deal with when dealing with Django rendering templates and Ember.js. So first things first. So first thing we'll need to do is get all the imports needed for our application. Um, as you can see here, we have four imports here. One of them is jQuery 10, 1.10, 1 which is optional. We have handlebars, which is uh, rendering template rendering application that Ember ends up using. Um, we have Ember.js himself, and then we have Ember Data. We won't be covering anything in Ember, with Ember Data today in today's screencast, but it's good to have it there if you're going to end up using a front-end model for your client. Once you've imported that stuff, we have an active Ember application, and we can begin. So the first thing we need to do when creating an Ember application is to go app is equal to Ember application, is, and then we create an instance of this. And this will be the, the the building block of everything around our app. This gives us access to the routers. This gives us access to uh, routes for particular models and everything else. So this is what we'll bind everything off of. So once we have this set up, so we're going to go ahead and save this. Before I continue there, I just want to show you the template that we have here. So we have a few script tags, which are the handlebar portions of our application. These won't render unless Ember tells it to render. So you have them in the page, but they don't really show up until you actually say, hey, render me and show me on the page. And this is this client-side rendering with JavaScript. So the first thing we need to look at, though, is our, our very first template. Now, this has an implicit ID of application. Um, you don't need to specify it. It actually bugs out when you do. But its default um, ID is application. So once we created the app in our last instance here, it automatically will render this portion of our page. Um, I'm going to quickly talk about the verbatim tag that we have here. If you're using a version um, before 1.5, you're going to have to write a template tag that registers it. Um, if you're interested about template tags, we covered it in last week's screencast. This simply does is it ignores anything within that two blocks. So everything between verbatim and end verbatim is ignored and it is not processed by Django. Um, this is due to the fact that handlebars has the very similar syntax of double braces internally. So we need this to get to the front end, which happens after our template rendering. So if we didn't have the verbatim, Django would go ahead and look up something called link to, which is a handlebar specific uh, rendering tag. If you are Django 1.5 and after user, the verbatim tag is already provided in the standard library and you don't have to include any, you don't have to register any uh, extra template tags. So as you can see here, we have a default template tag and we've created our application. So this should allow us at this point to be able to render the Ember application. So as you can see here, we've installed the Ember console, which allows us to see any errors. As you can see here, when we refresh the page, nothing is loading. Our two about links aren't there, which is interesting. So if something like that happens, what you do is get out the Ember debug tool toolbar, and what it'll give us is a view tree of all our routes. So as you can see here, we have an error in our JavaScript, which we're going to open up. So we're linking to our handlebars, and Ember are very tightly built together. Like you have to use handlebars if you're using Ember. Um, so when we define routes and link to them, it ends up looking for those routes in Ember. We haven't defined those routes in our app.js yet. So it's going, it's bugging out and saying you don't have them. So what we need to do is implement those routes. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So we're going to take our app, build a router, and then we're going to map each of those to a function. Function is anonymous, takes no arguments. And then we can map those each to a resource. So this dot resource. And we're gonna go about is one of them. And the next one is this dot resource. 
games, which we'll do next after that. So once we have those two routes built out, we're going to go back to our template. As you can see here, each of these corresponds to a handlebars template. So as you can see, we have one for games and we have one for about. So these aren't shown on the page currently. So when we re refresh, you won't see either of them. So let's go back here and refresh. We see that our application template is rendering. So when we hover over the Ember.js view tree, we'll see that this is the application template and has an application controller and it is rendering the list of these two things. Now, now that's all resolved. You'll see that each of these corresponds to a game item. So when we click the about button, it tells Ember, hey, render the resource that is tagged with the about ID in our handlebar script. So you'll see that we'll get this one to come out when we click about. And as you can see, it quickly renders this on the page and it shows it right under. Now, the way that was done was through the outlet. The outlet allows us to specify a place in which we can inject information. So we have our main, we have our main application context and we have an outlet. That outlet allows us to pass in resources, which we defined here from our handlebars templates to the outlet in our application context, which is the larger portion that we saw up here. So when we hovered over that, we pushed everything into this application context, which is what we'll be ruling. And then you can see that the about template has been shoved inside there and has an about controller. Or that is the way you'd go about rendering different outputs in different spots. So you can have multiple outlets in a particular application page. And then you could see how you'd lay out your pages. You'd have a game page, you'd have an outlet for your content, and then you'd inter intersperse that throughout your application. So now that we have, now that we have that, out of the way, our next challenge is to get our application backend feeding data through our API to the front end. So if you remember from last time, what we did was we built an API endpoint for our games. So this allows us to get all the current games in our system. It provides us some user data, what sport they're playing, this time of start, and some restrictions. So what we wanna do now is feed this data into our, rend our rendered Ember application here. So right now we've rendered an about page, which simply is a default page with some information. Our, our link to handlebars uh, template tag allows us to click this button and render this hash bang about. Next, we want to do it for the games one. This games one is slightly different because this time it actually requires information from an API endpoint, which is what we described here in our previous example. So now that this is all done, what we need to do is simply take this particular um, endpoint and allow us to render some data requested from somewhere else. So as a first step, what I did was I took all the information that we had in our template there and assigned it to an object in our uh, in our JavaScript object in our application context. So this is in our app. The games variable is now available, which has all the data that we need. This is a quick, cool way to debug and first stub out all your, your code for an application. So the 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 fact that you need to require the fact that you need to go make a call is irrelevant at this point it simply um gives us an easy way to debug what's going on and allow us to set up our templates so i suggest that you create an uh, json object which represents your api endpoints value that will return and then work with that until you have something that you're happy with then afterwards tack in the api call that gets you that information so i'm just going to quickly stub out um a game route so we're going to define a game route for our application and this is how we get data from the outside world so we're going to extend ember ember route and with that done we're going to specify a model which is a function that calls something or calls something and then returns that value so in this case we're going to be we're going to return our games value which contains all the data that we need for our particular application now we're going to go back to our ember HTML, as you can see in our handlebar template for games, right, which is specified from the route here. Um, when we click the games route, this will render that into the browser uh, address and then render this page. What it will give us is a list of all the games. So this each tag will render for as many things that are in the array. Now, as you can see here, our our object here is returning uh, an array of games. So our hand, our handlebar tag each will run this for as many times as there are items. So we're gonna go owner dot first name organize the game of x so we can we can get our game variable. 
So we can go to down here, we can go sport dot sport. So let's quickly put that in there. Sport dot sport, which will give us the sport that they tried to create. And on the date of this with the requirement that these restrictions and that'll go through all of those and give us hopefully a list of all the games that are currently active on the page. So let's go back here. And as you can see, we're on our about page. We now go to our games page and we have an issue. So we're going to inspect this issue and we'll go to our Ember console. We see that our game routes are all attached. Looks like there is a bug though. Ember is very specific about how you name things. The issue that we just saw was the fact that this was called game root as opposed to games root. A lot of this stuff is a lot of convention that Ember provides and it's part of why it's kind of good. It's also very frustrating when you see issues like this pop up, but generally if you're writing a little bit of bits of code at a time, it's very easy to pinpoint where your problem is. But in this case, we called it game root as opposed to games root, which is the name of the ID of the template and the resource. So we're gonna go ahead and save that and we should see our games route render the template in our web application. And as you can see, we have all the current games rendered here. So Madi organized the game of basketball at this time with the requirement that are no beginners. Quinta organized the game of baseball with the requirement that there are no softball players and Madi organized the game of hockey requirement that everybody brings skates. So as you can see, we're taking our uh, JavaScript object at this point which then gives us a callback to our JavaScript object, which then renders this particular for each template. Now, the next step is to take this particular app and make it use our API endpoint for our backend. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see here right now, there is no request to our API. All you see is the files loading because the file is loading our data from this variable here. So when we do away with this, get rid of that, and we're going to make a call, and this is going to be end up using jQuery, which is why we imported it initially. We're going to do jQuery dot get JSON. We're going to pass in a URL to get it from. So it's going to be our example, which is the server we're running from. So it'll be the example dot com colon a thousand slash api slash games and that it'll get an input from there and then we create a function callback which has data as a specified value and we return data and this should give us an application which calls our API and renders that data as the end result. So as you can see here, we made a call to the API endpoint, 200 value return. As you can see, the response is our API values. And you can see here that we have rendered a template through Ember.js using the API we built in our previous screencast. So for example, now if we're to add a new game, so we can go to our admin, Sure, we're going to create a new game. It'll be these players. When it'll be mod who created the game. Let's say it starts now. Let's put in 43, 45, 6. My house has the value three players with a restriction of no experts. And the game is active. We're going to go ahead and save that. Oh, sport is hockey. I'm going to save that. Perfect. We have a new game in our endpoint. Let's go back to our API to see that it is there. Games. Nine are, it's, it's right there, the one we created. We're going to go ahead and refresh this page. And as you can see, we have a new game organized today with the requirement of no exports. So that was an introduction to Ember.js. We're going to dive further into this. In future screencasts, we'll look into Ember Data as your client-side modeling framework, as well as dealing with individual items on this page and more dealing with handlebars in the future. Um, this screencast concludes our beginning tutorial on how to use Ember.js.